This one graph is enough to prove that dietary fat is not the cause of heart disease. It's also enough to show that saturated fat and dietary cholesterol cannot be primary causes either, since both of these go up as more fat is consumed in the typical American diet. It is common to hear the phrase correlation does not imply causality, but this is only sometimes true. I could put you in Queens on the night of the hijacking. Really? I live in Queens. Did you put that together yourself, Einstein? You seldom hear the more powerful phrase that is always true. Lack of correlation always means lack of causation. Science requires more than observation to make a conclusion. It always requires an experiment. But when the observation does not hold true, then we can reject the hypothesis out of hand. And that's what should have happened with the dietary fat hypothesis of heart disease. And we would have, in an honest world. Instead, a fish physiologist named Ansel Keys came onto the scene. Unsurprisingly, he found a career with fish to be a bit of a flop. So he switched to the field of human nutrition. But he did keep true to his roots, and he had quite the fishy career. During the war, he produced an emergency ration called the K-Ration for the American Armed Forces. It was very cheap, which made it quite popular with the government, which produced millions. Unfortunately, it was very low in nutrition and calories, which led to poor combat performance and severe malnutrition in many soldiers. After the war, he authored an observational study called the Seven Country Study, completely with a very scary graph that seemed to show dietary fat was strongly linked to heart disease. However, this graph turned out to be more than a bit fishy. Of the 20 plus countries with data available in Europe, he only chose to use the ones that fit his point of view. The remaining countries showed a much different story. It also turns out that when you plot mortality against sugar consumption using the same data that Keyes used, you get an even scarier graph that is a much better correlation. Sugar is more strongly correlated than saturated fat with heart disease, but Keyes chose not to disclose this data. It should also be noted that smoking is much more strongly associated with heart disease than anything in the diet. This was probably the main cause of heart disease in the time of Ansel Keyes, and that probably holds true today too. The Wikipedia page for Keys used to discuss the fact that the sugar industry paid large sums to promote fat consumption as bad instead of sugar, but that has been removed. Mm, yes, and she's scrabbling around to get them back on again, but even before she can get her knickers on, I've seen everything. You know, I've seen it all. It also claims the low-carb community has criticized Keys, and the True Health Initiative has written a response to debunk the criticism. Many, many studies have debunked Ansel Keys and his dietary fat hypothesis, not the least of which is his own work, which completely debunks the idea that replacing saturated fat with PUFAs would have a positive effect. In fact, it had a dramatically negative effect when they tried it experimentally. In reality, Ansel Keys did a great deal to promote the interests of the sugar lobby and also Procter & Gamble, the makers of Crisco. Disco stew got hooked on the white stuff back in the 70s. <sighs> Ironically, even his own six country study was a failure and did not show saturated fat was associated with heart disease, but in fact showed the opposite. Replacing the saturated fat with linoleic acid showed a large uptake in mortality rates for the participants of the study, largely from cancer. This was a result that was kept hidden from the public until well after Keyes' death. He had this information the entire time, but suppressed it. His entire career was spent promoting fake foods to the public, even though he had long-term experimental data showing them to be very, very dangerous to human health. 
He suppressed this information to his own personal benefit and to the great benefit of the food industry and the detriment of you. To human misery. <laughs> Keyes himself clearly stated that dietary cholesterol was not involved in heart disease, but even blood levels of LDL-C cholesterol are not associated with heart disease. In fact, they are overall inversely associated with mortality. This means they most likely have positive effects, and as it turns out, that is the case. The brain is made largely of cholesterol, and so is the cell membrane of a healthy cell. LDLC is also directly involved in fighting pathogens and even fighting cancer. So there's little wonder that it's positively associated with a longer lifespan. The question is, what is the evidence that high LDL will kill you? This systematic review answered that question. 19 prospective cohort studies with over 68,000 participants were reviewed and the overwhelming finding was that individuals with the highest LDL levels lived the longest. In fact, 16 of the 19 studies found this relationship. The higher the LDL level, the lower the chance of death. And it didn't matter how you sliced it or diced it. Comparing the very highest LDL group with the lowest, or just the second lowest, high LDL levels came out on top. Even when study subjects with terminal diseases, heart disease, diabetes were excluded, the results stayed the same. This study found about a 50% reduction in the chance of death in the highest LDL group compared to the lowest. In a nutshell, the findings of this systematic review are robust, and dismissing or ignoring them is scientific fraud. So not only is dietary fat not associated with heart disease, but the founder of the hypothesis admitted openly that dietary cholesterol was not associated with heart disease at all. On top of all that, Keyes also had hidden data showing that replacing saturated fat in the diet with PUFAs was extremely harmful in experimental data. And we can now see that the dreaded LDLC is a vital part of the human body with many beneficial functions. That's probably why statin drugs used to lower it have such terrible side effects. And statin use is associated with the development of diabetes. And the reason is because it's a mitochondrial toxin. That's where it works. It works at 3-beta-hydroxymethylglutaryl CoA reductase. It's a mitochondrial enzyme. Okay? Causing damage. So why should you be surprised that it's associated with diabetes? If you've watched my recent videos, then you know how important the mitochondria are for your health. Taking anything at all to affect them negatively would be a terrible idea, even if there was a strong benefit in doing so. But is there really any benefit to statins that make it worth the very harsh side effects? When you do, when you look for a primary prevention, turns out the RCTs do not show any benefit on mortality. Do you know what the mean increase in lifespan is from treating high LDL with a statin is four days, four days. None of these trials reduced CVD events and some of the drugs actually reported harm. This just came out three days ago. And so you're looking here, sorry, at all cause mortality and this is the degree of LDL cholesterol reduction, and it doesn't matter if it's statins or azetamibe or diet or anything else, that's your, that's your benefit, zero. On this side, we have number needed to treat. How many people do you have to treat with a statin to actually get it? one patient with benefit? 754, ridiculous. Number needed to treat maybe 10 might be cost effective. Really, five might be cost effective. Manufacturers and unethical doctors make wild claims about the effectiveness of statins, and some have even called for it to be put in the water supply. In reality, they are probably the biggest scam in medical history, and the reason is simple. The scientists developing them were operating on a theory which was completely fraudulent. 
They were successful in finding ways to lower cholesterol, but this has very little effect on heart disease and a very profound side effect profile. In spite of the fact these theories are fraudulent in origin and experimentally disproven in long-term trials, we still get grifters and clueless influencers coming out supporting them on a regular basis. There is absolutely a link. If you look at epidemiology, people who have higher levels of LDL tend to have higher levels of heart disease. This is absolutely fascinating. Epidemiologically has to be the most weaselly weasel word anyone has ever dreamed up. So I have to congratulate our nutritionist friend on that one. This also explains why the lie never quite dies. Epidemiology is always at heart a form of cherry picking data. Observation can never prove causation, but this form of observation takes a keyhole view of a small subset of data, i.e. cherry picking. Even raw, unbiased observational data with very strong correlations are not really science because no experiment is performed and therefore no causation can be determined. But this form of weak, case-dependent correlation can easily be abused to manufacture a conditional, special case correlation in a population subset. And that's what we see over and over and over. That means in reality, this is probably mere random chance at work, because in the rest of the population, we can easily pick out the opposite case, and often to a greater degree. They also glossed over the fact that the level of causation could only be in proportion to the level of correlation. So if a meat eater were to have 1% more colon cancer than a vegan, even if this small difference is not random chance, or bias, where does the other 99% come from? If meat eaters smoke just slightly more than vegans, or have slightly more sugar, then these real causes could easily explain all of this away. In fact, when we take that same data and adjust it to compare only meat eaters who smoke to vegans who smoke, then we find that the vegans actually have 50% more colon cancer. So any way you look at this stuff, it's all a giant crock of lies. Instead, this bogus data is treated by the clueless media and doctors as if it's science, even though the best epidemiology could ever do is point the way to what experiment to perform. But we've already performed the experiment. Ansel Keys already performed the experiment and the results showed the opposite of his hypothesis. Unfortunately, he simply didn't reveal all the results to us. So next time someone tries to scare you with yet another goofy statistical analysis from a mysterious group with industry ties, just remember the experimental process is what makes science meaningful. The rest is just speculation. And when it comes to dietary fat, cholesterol, and saturated fat as causes of heart disease, we already have long-term experimental data proving these are not causes of heart disease. That is the only data that matters, and speculation and cherry-picked data are meaningless. And if your mother and father are living in terror of eggs and beef, as many elderly people sadly are, just show them this video. These are some of the most important and nourishing foods for preventing dementia and sarcopenia in the elderly, which are the real fears that we should have because these are becoming bigger and bigger issues over time due to our terrible high carb diets. Please leave this room.